Hi, I'm Rick Friedrich, and this is another video from, I guess, Alathian Heart. So here we are in front of perhaps the world's first in-ground greenhouse that has this umbrella perimeter effect around it. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to see um, a larger one, and then we're going to look at a smaller one. So stay tuned. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the idea of making a better in-ground greenhouse. So first of all, the, the advantages of an in-ground greenhouse are that, first of all, you don't have any airflow coming against it. You don't have to deal with all that wind resistance. But then you're getting the benefit of being in the ground and the ground temperature. So that means in the winter um, you have 55 degree ground temperature and we're going to talk about why what I've done is improved upon the existing systems. And uh, maybe other people have done this, I don't know, but I'm not aware of anybody doing this. So this may be the very first one ever done. I know one of my friends was building one, so I'm not sure if he got it done before this one was, but we started this last year and never got it finished and then we finished it well we did finish it a little bit last year but there's still a little bit more to be done but the idea is that um with this system what did we do we added around the perimeter um the walls the problem with the walls in an earth ground system is the rain comes down in the fall and goes into the ground and then that's where you have this frost frost line you know goes as much as deep as the water goes so then you would have really basically frozen walls to contend with so those who have done these earth ground systems have ended up um, having to insulate their walls and the walls aren't contributing to the heat which is what you want so what we've done here, what I did, and I mentioned this in a previous video a long time ago, um, what we've done is created the umbrella effect, which we talked about with a house, and I applied the same concept to this um, greenhouse. So what I did is initially, I'm talking about 15 years ago or so, in my first house, we had a water leak in our basement. So what happened was, we had like a 200 year old house and there's big huge stone walls and how was I going to fix that? So I learned about this umbrella effect. I applied it to the side of the house. So I dug two feet down and four feet out on a slope from the, like in this case, it would be like right there, right? So four feet out, but two feet down, but on a, a decline. Then you put, we put uh, foam sheets down that you have on the side of a house. And then like four by eight sheets, that's why I went four feet out. And then we'll put plastic down, or you could do, in this case we used rubber, which you'll see right here, this is rubber. This is actually another room inside, we'll go in there in a minute. So what happened is, we put the earth all back down, you wouldn't know it was there because, you know, it's underneath the grass and everything. So when the rain came down the side of the house, or just, you know, on the grass, it would go into the ground. It would never penetrate past the plastic, in this case, the rubber. And so all, and then it would be insulated underneath the plastic. Um, so you never really get anything lower than 55 degrees. I mean, more or less, I mean, depending on where you are and whatever, but uh, it remains dry. So the water kind of rolls off and maybe a little bit farther than the four feet like in this case, we went maybe six feet. You can kind of see the edges of this on this one. And we'll talk about the unique obstacles with this one because of the driveway behind there. So this is kind of way overkill. And we'll, we'll talk about the smaller one in a minute. But the idea was, so my, my dry, my basement then was, was um, warmer and no longer was it damp. 
because there was all this water coming through that wall. So then I did that on the other side of the house with two new rooms that I built. So then when it came to thinking about this greenhouse concept, and of course I was familiar with the in-ground greenhouses, and, and the guys were doing you know, all this elaborate flooring to do the geothermal, and they would go for huge lengths, eight foot down, you know, like 200 or whatever feet. The guy in Nebraska, the old man, um, was doing that. And it was a lot of work. You know, they, they, they talked about all this cost. And I was like, well, and, you know, they're having to contend with the cold walls. And so I thought, well, I can apply this whole greenhouse, uh, this earth shelter around the perimeter. So that's what we did around this whole perimeter here. We'll start to go here and um, look at it more closely. Now this one hasn't really didn't get a chance to be used this winter. They're just too busy doing other things. But so this was already built on the side of a hill, like you can see the hill right here in the driveway. Um, it's kind of hard to see the angles. And um, I mean, this is not my property. This is someone else's uh, that agreed to do this. So what happened was we have a driveway here that has some very heavy equipment coming down here, like, you know, many, many tons. So we have this unique problem here of trying to build this very close <laughs> to a very you know, a heavy path here. So this required quite a bit of reinforcement. Um, so this is not your typical um, example, but it is what it is. So, and it wasn't completely my, I'm not trying to control anybody doing this. And they decided to build this room here and we had to do different things to accomplish that. So the idea right here is that in this case, there is a slope that we did dig down here and then covered it up with earth. And again, if you're going to do this with an earth shelter, um, the slope has to be considered in relation, especially on this farther end over here. Um, the steep slope, you have to consider the what you put on top so that you're dealing with any kind of um, erosion like this corner right here it's not like a, you can see again some of the the rubber right here um, well in this case this has plastic so there's rubber what we did I know what we did we didn't go rubber without here we did we have a layer of plastic going up over here and then the rubber went and covered it over and it went down, you know, maybe like a foot or two. Um, and um, I had done this on a roof years ago, and I think it still has it on that old house. So anyway, we can walk around here a little bit, and then we'll go inside and talk about it. So, I mean, the details of the structure or that is all you know, relative to what you need to do and all that. In this case, we haven't finished all the air, you know, the ventilation system and on the water system and all that. We just kind of got... Initially, what we were wanting to do is actually build here another building and make... Um, and that still could be done later on here. Extend out this... Um, this here and actually um, there's a lot of different options there and I've talked about that in a previous video of the earth shelter video so um, you can have obviously different roofs on this now one point that I could make well I remember this is not a scripted video <laughs> I apologize if the camera's kind of shaky or anything but I'm not used to usually holding video camera. So this hasn't been done or anything, but like it's not finished, it's not planted. 
there's a couple of things that are planted in here, but um, definitely worked out. So what you can do, maybe like in the winter or stuff, you can put um, reflective material, like even as cheap as tin foil, on the back. In this case, that was the north wall, or yeah, that's the north wall. And of course you want in the northern hemisphere to face the south. And you can use reflective uh, material, but you have to watch that, just like with people who try and do that with solar panels. When you have full sun, you could have quite a lot of heat um, and ruin plants and that. So you got to know what you're doing. But what's good about an earth shelter greenhouse, not an earth shelter, sorry, a <laughs> you wouldn't want to earth over the shelter itself, but um, an in-ground greenhouse in this case is that you could, if you wanted to, cover this over at night with some kind of, you know, cover that would even hold the heat even more. Because, I mean, you're going to have a pretty good, I mean, this is not hugely great <laughs> insulation here. But if you wanted to, you could easily do that kind of thing. So let's go down in here. This is just a basic um, hatch, I guess you call it. And we never finished the ladder here. Actually, this is my old ladder that I've had for the longest time. And here's this little, uh, little room, storage room for whatever. That wasn't really my idea. <laughs> um, so you can see here. Uh, what, what's been done here, you can see that there was some initial bowing of these beams here because of they had sat actually for quite a long time and didn't get finished. Um, I wasn't in the country for seven months, so I never was able to help out finishing this. Um, but anyway, you can see the idea. You got your concept of a raised bed garden in here. And this is, you know, bigger than I had expected them to make here. And of course, they had some really big wood pieces here. And, um, but yeah, you could hang plants from here and do different things. Um, you know, it's not really my purpose to talk about greenhouses in general, but we just made this kind of room back here. It's kind of too hard to see. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of exciting. So what we're going to do is um, I have some pictures of another greenhouse that we'll, um, we'll go to next. And it won't be just be a couple of pictures that I took. Unfortunately, I'm not there to take the video of it. I wasn't planning to um, do that. So... Um, let me go up here again. So that little greenhouse was actually one of my workers um, decided we were talking about this whole idea and he just decided to take it upon himself to do his own little um, uh, in-ground greenhouse. Now he made it a little bit bigger than I was expecting and you know he did it all for free materials like that he had laying around. Um, he's a 16 year old actually. And he, uh, you know, put it together pretty pretty nicely. So, um, so the idea that I'm trying to talk about is that with what with he did here, where you'll see in the pictures in a minute, is that you have a very low budget example where you could do it in an afternoon. Uh, basically, if you had like a sliding glass door that you could get for free that was maybe all fogged up or something. And you wanted to use that kind of like the idea, like almost like a refrigerator in the ground where you open up the door. And then um, what you do is build a little wooden frame that you'll see in the picture. And um, you go maybe say three feet deep or depending on what kind of plants you're growing. And first, before you dig the hole though, this is what I told them to do here and with him. Both of them didn't do that. <laughs> um, 
what I'm saying here is that you want to dig the perimeter um, umbrella effect first before you dig out this area. Think about it. Because, so you say you, this is all earth right here and you haven't dug this out yet. And you've got this, you want to be going from the ground level, right? And then going down, say, four feet out, two feet deep. And this is on a hill, so it's a little different. But um, so you do that, you put that down, you put the earth back on it. Then, like, and you do that around the whole perimeter that you want to work with. And then you go and dig this out. That way, if you're trying to do it after the fact, then you're putting more pressure on these walls while you're trying to dig and do all that. And if you've already done it, packed it all back down, then you start digging this out with and bracing it up and so forth. Um, that's what I recommend. But again, it's not, I'm not trying to control the idea. I'm just telling you what I suggest. So that's the basic idea. And you could do a small one. And I think it'd probably be easier to do a whole bunch of small ones in the ground. And I think that's more familiar with people who are doing these little tiny mini greenhouses that are manageable. And like I said, you don't have any wind blowing up against it. I had a greenhouse that was pretty strong, but, you know, there was too much um, wind blowing. There's a pretty big field where I used to live, and it just blew it away. I mean, it just completely, I had to go and find all the pieces. And I was like, oh, it's not worth it. So, so the idea, we don't have any current crosswinds. Now, you could have a little bit, like, the initial idea was to have some air coming in through that side. Um, we could have it coming through, you know, the top there and there. And I'm not saying that you couldn't do more geothermal in here, but um, it's nice down here. And like I was saying earlier, it's not just in the winter time that you're dealing with. You're also 55 degrees temperatures in this earth around here in the summertime. So now you're dealing with cooling, which is, you know, in general for the summer, it'd be the same thing without the earth sheltered perimeter. But at least in the winter, we're keeping it 55 degrees in the winter time, which is important up here in Indiana. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I was going to say. I hope you enjoy the video.